Hello, this is Jeff Ryle from G4 Geomatic Resources in Houston. And today we're gonna to go over a one-step transformation uh, with field data collected with an RTK unit, bring it into the Infinity Office software to do a transformation. So first of all, a one-step transformation is also known as a localization or a calibration. It's really the same thing. And the advantage of a one-step is we can transform or shift, rotate, and scale directly into a local control system. Um, and when we do that with multiple points, we can check the integrity of these existing points. Um, so if we go out there with RTK, take multiple shots, um, we can take a look, make sure that the ground control is good, nothing's been moved or distorted, and check the residuals to make sure that we can use these points on this job. So it's really good to check the integrity of the ground control. Also, if those points were set in a local coordinate system, if it's in ground or surface, with a local orientation, um, the one step will rotate, shift, rotate, and scale or warp right into that ground system. Okay. And the neat thing about Infinity, um, we can do this in the real time in the field. Today we can go over the Infinity Office software. So, what that does allows the field crew to send it in. The RPS has more tools at his disposal to make the decision. And um, he could look at the integrity of the data, and then he could store this tra transformation and then upload that transformation to multiple other crews to use in the future. So once again, we do it one step, we recommend to use at least four points. Um, this will give us redundancy to check the integrity of the data and the residuals. And once again, the one step is used for smaller areas. Um, we recommend not going over three mile by three mile box. Um, so if you had a, a large, let's say a car door for a, uh, like a tech stop project and you had control points over that whole area, we can just break it up to three, four mile chunks and just call those one steps, different coordinate systems names. And then you can move from one to the other and that allows to work in that local system. And once again, if you're using the four points, it's always a good idea to surround the job area. So let's take a quick look at what we're going to try to accomplish here. So once again, we go out in the field, we'll take a single shot on a single point. And once again, if I have one common point, that really doesn't do much for me ge geometrically because I can be rotating around the X and, y and Z axis. And um, so once again, uh, it's not going to really do, do me much good. So what do we do if we hit a second point? Let's say we have a second common point. And let's imagine that this blue line represents through north that GPS is on. If I hit a second point on that local control um, and define a one step, it will then allow us to rotate into that orientation. And if I was in the field, um, once again, the geometry is fairly weak, but what this allowed me to do is I could use this to rotate in to find the other points and then update my one step in the field, okay? So once again, there's no redundancy. It does rotate into that system, into the local orientation. And if I hit my third point, it's like I've got a three-legged stool. I'd have redundancy on horizontal, but once again, there's no redundancy on my vertical. So my plane, that's defined by these three points. If one of these points was off, I could have uh, movement in that plane and thus you no know, issues with my vertical. So what I want to do is, uh, for that third point, once again, I could use my one step to find the, the last point, my fourth point. And this fourth point would then, as you see here, define a plane. And that would give me a um, redundancy of my horizontal and vertical to check the integrity of all these points. And um, if I was working in this job area, I'd use these four points to surround my job area to work in that local system. Once again, if I had more points in the center here, it strengthened the geometry, but I just want to show you graphically here four points around the job area on local control gives us redundancy in horizontal and vertical, okay? All right, so let's take a quick look. What we're gonna do is go to infinity now and I'm gonna create a new project. Let's include this over here. Create a new project and I'm gonna create two projects. The first one, we're going to import the local control points. So I'm going to create this project. And what we do now is hit the import button. 
and I'm going to go to where we have the uh, coordinates backed up. So underneath here, we'll change our import type to ASCII. And I got a CSV file here. And uh, once again, up here, it says what template you want to use. So I've got these ones that are preset. So real fast, let's so edit this template. We're basically going to define here a point number, northern, eastern, ortho height, and code. Okay. And it shows these local coordinate systems. And we'll hit OK. Now that's good. We'll hit import and we'll import the data. So right now we have the points. Uh, these are the local control points. Or so infinity, these are control points. And this is what we're going to transform into. Okay. And this is supplied by the other survey firm. And what we do now is create a separate project. And we're going to import the RTK data. All right, so I'll create this project name here. My uh, coordinates look good here. Create that point. And once again, we'll hit import. And then I'll pick the DVX file. And we'll pick all the data here and import it in. And this is actually um, raw field data. So right now, if I come here and I'll take a look, um, what we can do now, get have a current CCP, you can click on this here to show the background map. And right now, uh, there's a bunch of points in here. So I hit, hit the inspector. There's a bunch of deleted points here. So let me clean this up a little bit. I'm just going to highlight all these deleted points and just right click, hit delete, and then hit OK. And right now, let's take a look at the points that we picked up. Uh, in this case, they took single shots. There's some average shots here. We, we'd highly recommend to go back and shoot the points you're using on a one step twice. In this case, we didn't, but let's just take a look at the data, and it's good, still a good example. And what I do is come down here and take a look at your 3D or, or 2D CQ to make sure that all these points, you can see that they're in pretty good shape and they're fixed, and we'll start there. Okay, so we'll come back, and, uh, and this shows the job site, and you can see the points around the job site fairly well. Um, it's not the best geometry, but it's still pretty good. All right, so what we're going to do now is we've got two projects, we've got the raw data imported in, the control points. Let's, let's define a one step in Infinity and show you how to do that. So I hit the file key over here, and we get outside of our projects. And down here, we have tools. So hit the tools button, and then we'll hit the coordinate system. And this shows all the coordinate systems we have currently on my computer. I'm going to hit the manager button, this little button here, and this digs a little bit deeper. And underneath here, there's a little button here called Determine Transformation. And this is awesome. Uh, so this, we can, this is where we do the one step. So I click on here, and you can see there's several different options. Classical, 3D. Today we're going to do the one step, and there's a quick round. Uh, if you go to Peyton Hatch's YouTube channel, he's got an excellent video on the quick round, which is very handy. This option came out i think it's like 3.6 or later so if you have older infinity this this option might not be around if you do the upgrade then you, you have access to that so for now hit the one step and we're going to come down here and hit orthometric and we're not going to use the geo to model because we're going to use the local vertical okay and basically i'm going to call this the job name and we're going to check the boxes compute shift rotation and scale, and use the average plane of the points. Okay, so hit next. And the first box here says system A. This wants us to pick the project where our RTK points are in. So I'm gonna pick this project here, 1124 Raleigh RTK Raw. So I named it something that made sense. You can see here, here's the, here's the field data that we picked up. It says, right, what's the project where your local points are in. And once again, I'll pick uh, Raleigh local points and see that these have the symbol for control points. Okay. So, what we're going to do is going to match up. So, I'm going to match up common points. So, if I match up 700 with 700 control, this little arrow pops up and I'll pop down here. And right now, there's no residuals because, like I said, one point um, is just sitting on a single plane. 
On here, I can click here and change how I want to match these up. So for right now, I want position height. And what we'll do is we'll pick the second point. And see, I got a 701. What I did is I created a point 701 bad. I shifted it around a meter just to show you. So for now, let's just pick the correct point, come down, and once again, position height. And once again, our residuals are now zero. It doesn't mean it's tight. Like we talked about, it rotates in. And it, this basically just is a two-point fixed plane. So it's a very weak geometry. What we'll do is I'll slide on down and go to 702, match up 702 with 702. And once again, position height. Now you can see that our residuals horizontally are looking pretty good. We have three points for redundancy. And once again, the vertical plane, the residuals are zero. Doesn't mean it's accurate, just means that there's only three points to define that plane, so there's no redundancy. Now, if I came down and picked 703, the 703, match it up. Once again, the horizontal looks pretty good. Let's take a look here. And once again, you can see that uh, 702 is kind of flagged. So um, basically, if we went back in and looked, we, we had, and I'll show you after the fact, 702 had a, uh, it put to another base station. And for right now, I could look at that and say, you know, that's a good enough check, but I just want to use position only, then use the other points. And once again, there's, you know, what's going to be no redundancy, but I probably want to go out there and reshoot in 702 a little bit longer to get a better vertical on there. But if I pick, pick position only, then once again, we'll use these three other points to define my vertical plane. So I'll just keep it at that. I can live, it's not the best accuracy, but I can live with that. And then once again, I could store that. If I came over here and I had a bad point, I just want to show you. So what I can do is turn this point off, say none. And let's say I want to match up 701 with this other 701. Let's say we found two points out in the field. We don't know which one's good. I wrote it as bad just to help us speed up uh, in the video. And once again, uh, if we match those points, see how there's a very high residual here? And um, once again, it's flagging this point with the highest residual. So once again, if I had several points in the office, I could take a look at it and say, hey, that one doesn't match. I'll put that back to none. And then quickly come back here and change that back to position and height. And that way I verify that these are points that agree with each other. And these ones I want to use my transformation. So hopefully that shows the power of using these, uh, these little toggles here to QC the data to take a look at what, what data is good. So hit next. And I'll come up and show the, uh, the ship rotate parameters and the scale factor. So we scale a little bit, it's very close. I'm gonna create a new coordinate system. That way it stores it in infinity and I can upload this and transfer it to other rovers. Now what I do is I, my residual, I normally do one over distance squared or multi-quadratic. Um, either one should work fine, even one over distance is fine. And that will then warp into local control. So um, I'll just use one over distance squared. But you can mess with these settings here if you wish, um, but I'd recommend that. What we we'll do now is we we'll hit the finish button and that's gonna store that coordinate system. And it'll show a nice uh, report here. And if I scroll down, once again, it'll show the points that we used for RTK, the points that we used that are in a local system, how we matched them up, and the residuals in Easton, Northern, and Height. Okay, so it's gonna get those four points and we'll close out of here. So now I've got my, uh, there's my transformation right there. And once again, there's our information. Um, now, if I wanted to upload this, I could say hit export and I hit selection because I just want to export this coordinate system here. And what I can do now is transfer that to the, uh, to my SD card, put them to DVX. And what I'll do is you have different files here. This is an infinity file. So that would be if I'm going to another infinity software. Um, what I'll do is do the transformation dot that and then hit save. That'll save it to the SD card that can transfer up to the uh, CS20 data collector to use in the field.
Okay, and there we go. All right, now I can also hit this button here to copy the project, and that will copy this transformation to that local project. So if I do that, get out of here. Let's go back to Project Manager and um, hit the home, but home key. I should now, if I click down here, I can I can use Zerati, and that would then transform us into that local system. And now my northern, eastern, and elevation are on that new coordinate system. Okay. And once again, I can then export these coordinates here. Everything looks good. Hit Control A, and away we go. I can save as, or I can export my data here export all my data to an ASCII file, okay? Um, real fast, go back to the view screen. Um, I'm, I'm gonna show you, whoops, we'll come here. Remember, we were, we're looking at 701. So I right click, center, zoom, come back here. I'll zoom out a little bit. And these are the control points. So we've got the background map. And once again, 701 is next to some trees. Um, so that, that could also be a problem with the coordinate quality. I come to layer manager. I'm going to quickly turn on the GNSS observations and turn this off and on. And then you can see you know, which cord, which base station it is linked into. So one of these you can see 703 was linked into the other base station down here. And that's what I could look at as well. So these two base stations are pretty close together. So once again, um, 703, that was off a little bit because it's using this other base station here. It's still within spec, everything's okay. But I just wanna show you how you can quickly look at that data as well. And that's the beauty of using Infinity so we can see a little bit more of what's going on in the field with the, uh, with the survey data supplied by the field crew. And once again, we used these control points here and surrounds the job area. So um, we can then work with them in these parameters uh, in that local coordinate system. Okay. All right, so I'm going to minimize here. So once again, we did the four points, we checked the residuals. And then if I wanted to, we have, I transformed uh, the TRS.dat. So once again, if I come here to my uh, SD card, under DBX, all that, that coordinate system is now stored under this file here, okay? So I, if I go to my uh, CS20, uh, we hit settings and number six tools. And uh, then we go to number one, transfer objects. Then we'll pick coordinate systems. And basically we then pick that one dot Raleigh coordinate system and transform it from the SD card up to internal memory. And that will then be on the CS20. And then, then every fuel crew could then use that coordinate system on that project and, and go into that local coordinate system. Okay, so that's how fast we can transfer from the SD card up to the CS20 to use it in the field. Okay. And once again, we had four common points that define the plane, we check the residuals, and we have redundancy in horizontal and vertical, so that's important. And uh, so it's recommended that um, you have at least four, preferably five, on a, uh, a building project. And we surround our work area. So we have one in the center, it, that would really uh, get the vertical plane down, because it's almost like you're doing your own geodo model. And once again, we'd recommend, if you can't keep within three miles by three miles, that that'd be ideal as well, because we're creating like a flat plane. And if you work a little bit outside these control points, you should be fine. But once again, if you work way outside this area, you're gonna propagate your error. Your error. So try to keep uh, as close to these control points as possible. If you're on a long linear site, it's recommend you tie control points at either end. And let's say it was a, a road project, try to get control points on the outside of the road corridor. And, and all the control points, you try to avoid them having them in a straight line because that would you know, cause some pivoting problems, okay? All right, so that's a quick overview on how to do a one step, how to check an infinity. We'll do another video of how to do it in the field, but we just wanna go over 
the Infinity Office software and how to check the integrity of your data, create, create a, a one step and then load that up to your controller for your mobile rovers to use on that project. And in this case, where um, the client was working in local coordinates and ground system, and then all the data from then on, he can upload uh, an ASCII point to stake out in that system. And as long as that coordinate system 1.rati is selected, they're off and running. So I hope you found that beneficial and helpful and appreciate you uh, spending your time listening to it. Have a great day.